Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to understand the topic of steam from the subject of thermal engineering. So let's get started. Process of formation of steam. So as shown in the figure, here I have taken 1 kg of water into this piston cylinder arrangement. So initial conditions of water is taken as pressure is taken as 1 atmospheric pressure and the temperature is taken at room conditions that is say for example 32 degree centigrade temperature. So what I am doing, I am supplying heat to this particular quantity of water. So what happens on heating this water slowly the temperature rises and particularly at 100 degree centigrade temperature what happens that uh, we know that 100 degree centigrade temperature is the boiling point for water so what happens on reaching the 100 degree centigrade temperature slowly the first molecule of steam starts forming that is slowly as the time progresses and what happens in this figure we can see that a particular quantity of water converting into steam that is we have both the quantities of steam as well as water so this particularly steam that is wet steam which i have mentioned here contains some moisture particles that is it is not completely dry that is it contains some quantity of steam as well as some quantity of water hence we term this type of steam as wet steam so now further heating this quantity of wet steam and water what happens at the, as the time progresses or else with the passage of time we get completely steam that is this quantity of vapor uh, slowly converts into the whole of the vapor that is we can say that this quantity of water converts into wholly into steam that is we get dry steam now dry steam does not contain any moisture particles or it does not contain any moisture suspended in it on further heating this particular quantity of dry steam we get superheated steam that is let us understand all these terms with the help of a proper figure so let us understand this topic further with the help of temperature versus heat diagram so as shown in the figure let us start from this particular point a point a shows the initial conditions of water that we had taken earlier at 32 degree centigrade temperature and one atmospheric pressure now i'm further heating this quantity of water and hence point b indicates 100 degree centigrade temperature that is the saturation temperature of water on further heating the steam will start forming that is from point b slowly as the time passes what happens slowly the water get converted into steam that is at point c what do we have completely we have 100 percent steam that is point b indicates completely water that is we can say that it indicates saturated liquid point whereas point c indicates saturated vapor or else saturated steam point now on further heating this saturated steam that is dry saturated steam at point c what do we get this type of line and that is at point d we get superheated steam now this whole figure that is this curve a b c d i have drawn particularly for only one value of pressure that is one atmospheric pressure so if i draw this type of curves for different values of pressure i will get this type of curves that is a up to this point and there here it passes that is at pressure p2 and for some other value of pressure say for example here p3 value of pressure so what happens after some time if i draw the locus of all these values of curves at uh, this particular points and this particular points what happens with the passage of time this value that is latent heat of vaporization slowly decreases i can say that this curve bc for one atmospheric pressure and as compared to this value of value of bc for value of pressure p2 slowly as the passage of time this value of latent heat of vaporization slowly decreases and we reach this value and when we reach at this particular point that is what i have mentioned here critical point what happens latent heat of vaporization slowly decreases to zero and hence i can define this particular point that is critical point as the point of meeting of the saturated liquid line and saturated vapor line that is i can say that at this particular point the liquid phase as well as the vapor phase are in equilibrium with each other 
and hence I can define three types of regions here with the help of this figure. This is the region, the region left to the curve of saturated liquid line indicates the water region and the region between the saturated liquid line and the saturated vapor line can be termed as water steam region and the region on the right hand side of the saturated vapor line can be termed as the superheated region. So to summarize this whole curve, I can write a few points as discussed here. So the region A to B, that is this region A to B. This region indicates that water is heated from 32 degree centigrade, that is room temperature, up to 100 degree centigrade temperature. That is, I can say that 100 degree centigrade temperature is the saturation temperature for water. Now, from region B to C. So at B, what happens, the first molecule of steam starts forming and as the time passes, this, that is with the passage of time at point, point C, we will have all the water converted into steam, that is we will have dry saturated steam. So now for the region C to D, that is on further heating the dry saturated steam, which is, point, which is at point C, we will have completely superheated steam at point D. That is, the dry saturated steam on heating at constant pressure will be converted into superheated steam. So, in the next video, I shall discuss a few terms related to this topic like sensible heat, what is latent heat and what is heat of superheat into my next video. So, stay tuned for the next video. Till then, if you did like this video do share with your friends and subscribe to my channel till then thank you